Emma, get it again. I'll be watching basketball too. God, I need to clean my room. God, Portland is cold. God, Portland was cold. I could see my breath the first time I got there. Then never again because it just stayed at 40s the entire time I was there. The other Fall Out Boy show was alright, you know, didn't really find it too entertaining. It was alright, you know, it wasn't too entertaining. <laughs> Okay, fine. Let's run down the return to Portland. So I got there. It was cold. Saw my breath. Ate Mexican food, you know. The usual stuff you do to return when, when going to Portland. I was staying over at a friend's house, and it was still pretty busy with their college week, of course. So um, I didn't really do anything in the morning. So I just spent my time finishing Mob Psycho. And let me tell you, man. Mob Psycho, that is a good anime. That is a... Oh, my God. That ending? Never thought I'd get emotional for a birthday party, but... Here we go. This week in Portland was supposed to be for three events. Number one, a basketball game. Two, Fall Out Boy. And three, Playboy Cardi. But um, Cardi just decided to postpone every single show. Yeah, it was gonna be an extra event for week, but you know, Cardi's shows got postponed into the atmosphere. So who knows when I'm gonna see him. Hopefully this year, hopefully next year, hopefully in five years, who knows, who knows. 2024, music. Dropping 2030. But anyway, I can settle for a basketball game in Fall Out Boy because they seem fun on paper. But first, let's go a little chronologically and let's go with the Miami Heat game. I'm in Portland and the Miami Heat are coming to Portland to play the Trailblazers. And um, I can't lie, the first half was pretty scary. I, I, brought my, I brought my Jimmy Butler jersey and everything. I was repping the Heat in enemy territory. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be an easy win because it's the Trailblazers. They're not doing the best right now in the Western Conference. And um, we had a pretty slow start. Like, extremely slow start. Like, um, <laughs> they had like a 10-point 10, 10 lead on us in like the, at the end of the first quarter and leading into the second quarter. So, um, I was not having a good time. But, you know... I, I had trust in the Heat. I didn't have much faith in the Trailblazers either, so I, I, I was confidently, overconfidently saying that they were going to choke this lead. And lo and behold, second half happened. And what do you know? They choked their lead. <laughs> Felt really good because um, I went with two other friends. Two of us are Heat fans and one of them are, is a Thunder fan. So they don't really like, they don't really care who wins this game. But he was getting on our asses when the Heat were down in the first half. And it was, um, it was kind of irritating. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, we kind of deserved it for having a slow ass start like that. The Heat started to ramp up. Terry Rozier did this crazy fake out pass layup. It's pretty sick. Kevin Love almost got hurt in the first first half, and it was a uh, pretty scary. I thought it was gonna be over if that happened, but um, actually, the opposing team's player, the Blazers player, DeAndre Ayton, was the one that got hurt and got sent out of the game, which was um, pretty wild because he was the first one to get up. But hey, you know, injuries happen. Or well, I don't even know what the injury is, but yeah. Aiton was out for the rest of the game while Kevin Love still played. I got a video of him hitting a three, which got us like 100 points. If, if if the Blazers got 100 points, they would have gotten free Nuggets. Did not score 100 points. No Nuggets for the Blazers, baby. Hey. Woo! Chicken Nuggets? Chicken Nuggets? At halftime, I got like this fucking chicken and waffle burger. It was pretty tall. It was fucking huge. And a beer. So I ate that while we were watching the game. Third quarter happens. The Heat starts wrapping up their comeback. Either, sorry, I'm I, I, I'm kind of going off the cup of memory. Either we were tied in half, or we started the comeback after the half. Just, all I know is that the Heat started to ramp up, and we, we chipped away at that lead pretty fast, and pretty easily, I, I, I can't lie. The comeback starts, the Blazers start losing their momentum, the Heat take over, and basically through halfway of the fourth quarter, it was pretty much over. We <laughs> we secured the comeback and we won in enemy territory, which led us to a lot of Heat fans in the arena chanting, let's go Heat, let's go Heat, let's go Heat. And then, and then the home crowd just started booing the shit out of us. And I was like, this shit is so fun. It was petty as fuck. It was so petty. 
but I loved it. You know, it's that competition, you know, riles everyone up. But hey, you know, if, if we lost, if the Miami Heat lost to the Trailblazers, I would have been pissed. So I can understand Trailblazer fans, but oh my God. There's just a, there's just a little, this is a little lore. There's just a little bit of rivalry between the teams because you know, the whole Damian Lillard stuff and the Blazers GM kind of fumbling a bit, but you know, hey. It was a really fun experience, just being an asshole in the Moda Center. You know, I don't know what else to say besides it was a nice comeback and a pretty scary start and we got nice seats and I wasn't, we weren't on the Jumbotron one bit. So I don't know what it, I don't know what it takes for us to be on the Jumbotron. Maybe we weren't doing anything too crazy, but you know, whatever. I'll get on the Jumbotron one day, maybe. Hard to be humble when you're standing in the Jumbotron. I don't even remember the word. Hard, hard to be humble when something on the Jumbotron, devil in a new dress. I gotta re-listen to that song, but yeah. Really fun night. Really good win over the Trailblazers. Shame we lost to the Nuggets the next game. Oh well. That didn't happen. That did not happen. <laughs> I love you, Portland. It's all fun and games, Portland. No hard feelings, right? Oh yeah. Let's go, boys! Oh, yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah! Good job. Miami Heat 106. The Trailblazers 96. But now Fall Out Boy. I haven't listened to Fall Out Boy regularly since high school, but I can tell I had a Fall Out Boy phase just because I could recite so many lyrics when I was listening to a prep playlist that I made. I haven't listened to so much for Stardust fully, but I know um I know Jimmy Butler probably has because he started in a music video for the title track a day before the concert. Beat the Blazers and star in a Fall Out Boy music video, man. This could have been more convenient. But yeah, from what I heard, I think it's Okay, maybe I'll give it a listen later since I'm still in the Fall Out Boy mood. There's some songs that have been sticking with me. Love From the Other Side, um, the title track of course. I guess What a Time to Be Alive. So yeah, at first I was just gonna go for shits and giggles because I've grown out of Fall Out Boy. But I can't, I can't even lie, I was pretty entertained with the show. So, let's go over the show, shall we? I know there's Setless FM, but I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use this Twitter post from this user over here. Um, cause look at that, look at that neat little graphic they made. So I'm gonna use this just to help remember, cause, sorry, my memory's not the best, okay? I'm gonna run down the set list and comment on anything that was pretty notable. Oh wait, actually hold up, actually hold up. I should talk about the openers. So there were three acts before Fall Out Boy. First one was Daisy Grenade. They went, they were pretty hard, I'm not gonna lie. They were, they were really aggressive. Might have to check them out later. Next was the main. I'm assuming he's British. So if he's not, I'm sorry, he just sounded really British, but really British rock group. Had a fan come on at the end. It was pretty fun. And they were wearing all white, so um I like the I like the um I like how uniform you guys looked. And then Jimmy Eat World. And I'm not gonna lie. I know of Jimmy Eat World, obviously, because you know the middle. But other than that, I'm not too familiar with them. I don't know their songs like on the back of my head, but you know, they did their thing too and good on them. Okay, now we get to Fall Out Boy. So <laughs> before they actually came on, they played their We Didn't Start the Fire cover, which I, I wasn't, what's the word? I'm still not too <laughs> fond about, I guess. It's, it's just such a meh song. But after that, after that song went through, the lights went down, everyone starts cheering, Woo! Yeah, Fall Out Boy time. And then they play um, the Pink Sea Show. You know, it's like that little interlude to help start the show. And then, then we start, start. They play Love From The Other Side. And I'm not gonna lie, that shit was hype as fuck. And for good reason. If, if I do listen to the album, I'm gonna go with the premonition that that's the best song off the album. Cause when I first heard it, when they made it as a single, I'm like, wow, wow. This is a really good Fall Out Boy song. <laughs> and it was pretty fun live. It was like tuned down a bit, just to help, I'm assuming just to help with the crowd singing, cause like Patrick is a pretty high singer, I'm not gonna lie. And I I don't know if I can scream that high in that tune, like on the, on the studio version. So thank you, Patrick. Patrick, Pete, Joe, and Andy? I think that's their names. Love from the other side is the opening, like the opener, opener. And it was pretty hype. I was pretty prepared for that one, even though it was a newer song. Sending my love. Nope. Sending my love from the other side. And I just about snapped. 
Don't look back. Every love is got a little dagger in the end. Also, if I forget to mention it later down. Okay, I didn't record the whole thing, obviously. I just recorded parts just to help document document my experience there are parts where i'm singing and i do crack a bit because like i'm trying to go for it go for those notes uh sometimes i fail sometimes i'm okay with it okay deep deep ish voice so um yeah bear with me okay if i even fucking show it might have just exposed myself who knows so then we go into the phoenix which is Probably the first song I've ever heard from Fallout Boy. It's because of um, WWE 2K14 trailer. There's like a gameplay trailer they had. It was pretty hype, I'm not gonna lie. I mentioned that a bit ago in my 2013 video. It was nice to hear that. And they had like fire, pyrotechnics. I'm pretty sure this one also had Pete, Pete Wentz, the bassist, have a fucking flamethrower on his bass. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty sick. That was pretty sick. I can't, <laughs> I can't even fault him for that. Oh wait, I think Love from the Other Side also had pyrotechnics. Yeah, there are a lot of explosions in this, in this one, and a lot of, lot of set design that we'll get into. Then we go into Sugar, we're going down. They let us sing the verse at the beginning, and I choked up my lines. I, I mixed up, I mixed up the verses, so um, that's why, if I do show it, I, uh, <laughs> I choked up a bit. My bad. I had my one opportunity and I choked it. Happens, all right? I I'm pretty sure they've been doing it for years now, but it was nice to be a part of it. Classic Fallout Boy, you know. Oh yeah, also, I got decent seats for the Heat Blazers game, but I got nosebleeds for Fallout Boy because, you know, I can't be splurging all the time, okay? If, if I had to choose between my favorite basketball team and a, and a band I haven't actively listened to in years, I mean, I mean... It's a no-brainer, right? But, you know, maybe I should have just gotten front row seats for Fall Out Boy, because, you know, fuck it. Just kidding, I don't have that type of money. Next, they started doing the show stuff. They had, like, this clock thing, sending us back in time or whatever. Then this fucking rabbit guy comes out, starts dancing on the stage. Then we get into Uma Thurman. Nothing too much to say, other than <laughs> there's a bunny guy, the rabbit, whatever. Then we get, like, this backdrop of, like, the desert and shit, and this giant-ass snail. And I'm like, why is that? Th why is that a thing? <laughs> I'm not too caught up with Fallout Boy lore, so I I don't remember this happening with with Uma Thurman. But you know, maybe it's just it's just new to the set design. It was interesting. <laughs> then we get into um, little less sixteen candles, a little more hold me, something like that. It was a banger song. It's a banger song. So I think. Patrick also let the crowd sing part of it too. There's a good handful of moments where Patrick lets us sing sing the songs. And then, you know, that rabbit and the snail were just rocking out to the song, which, you know, is pretty valid. It's a pretty good song. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Then we do another little transition on the stage. We get to a point where Fall Out Boy does like songs, a couple of songs from their first album, Take This To Your Grave. And it's kind of cool because like the lights are lowered and it looks like it, it looks like more like of a smaller show, which is nice. because it, it makes it look like, you know, a smaller act. And it's like, you know, remember your roots type of thing. I thought it was pretty cool. Dead on Arrival and Grant the Bottom. Where's your boy? Bangers. Bangers. Oh, and, and Calm Before the Storm. But for Grant the Bottom, you know, you know, I'd be singing that part too. I'd be singing that part. And I don't know if this is here yet, but Pete can still scream. I don't know if he lost it or anything, or unless he's always had it, but Pete can fucking yell. He's got, he's got some metal vocals. So shout out to Pete. I don't know when I first noticed it, but I, I, I think I have a video in there somewhere. If I don't, then I'm sorry, but I'll show it when the time comes. But yeah, Pete can fucking yell so after calm before the storm we get another transition to this big ass dog not just the dog specifically a floating head of a dog at first i was like what what, what the dog doing but i'm like that's probably because there's so much for stardust album cover has a dog it's, it's not the best cover art maybe there's there's a deeper story behind it but you know, it's just there. Reminds me of Gratitude by Weezer. I haven't listened to that either, but I, I've heard it's not great. <laughs> so after after I get through with the with the flying dog head, we get into This Ain't A Scene, it's an arm race. Song's a banger. It's a good song, of course, but 
God. Every time I think of that song, currently, I just think of the Kanye West remix. If you've never heard of the Kanye West remix, you are doing yourself a disservice because you are missing out on... <laughs> <laughs> you're missing out on you're missing out on a real music band. Fall Out Boy does their the usual stick. They get to like the chorus and whatever. Then Kanye's first line is literally now I don't know what the hell this song is talking about. Which is <laughs> Kanye's management or Kanye is like was told about this song. Listen to the song is like what the fuck is this? Oh my god, it's so it's so funny, man. It's such a funny remix. In the video, I'm also like, "Where's Kanye? Where's Kanye?" Because of the song. But other than that, I had a fun time with that song too. It's a banger. Uh, they made the they made the dog sing part of it too, which was um. Good doggo, good doggo. Then we get some stuff with Folia do. This loyal, this this loyal order of water bottle. Jesus, dude, I, I I don't get why they had to do all these titles that probably aren't even related to the song itself. I, I probably memorized most of these, but it's just been so long. They like send out little balls for the crowd and for for like the crowd seats to um push around. It kind of looked like bubbles. Pretty sure what's that's the idea of it. But that was pretty cool. We didn't get bubbles obviously because we were in the fucking nosebleeds, but you know. Looks cool. Looks cool. Boy, Kyle, detox, just the detox. We get into another new song, Heaven, Iowa. Pretty good. Star Cross Lovers. Patrick was singing his heart out, you know. I mean, he was kind of doing that most of the time. Then they get into another Infinity on High song, which apparently they haven't played in a while. It was Bang the Bowl Drums. Pete was like, we we, we've been lacking in this song or whatever. It's some real fucking music. And they play it. Which... I can appreciate. I love that song too when I listen to it. Yeah, wrong. Oh, yeah, wrong. You know, the whole pirate type thing. Oh, that's where I found out. Yeah, I took a video of it of Pete screaming like crazy on Bang the Bowl Drums. I'm like, damn, this guy can still yell. There we go. That's where I, that's why I recorded him screaming. And probably other places too, but I'm too lazy to search through the whole video my whole photo album right now. Although, spoiler alert, they don't play, um, what is it? Takes Over, Breaks Over, and what else? There's another one that I liked from off, Infinity Off High. I don't know, but uh, it's a shame they didn't play that one, because I really like that one. But anyway, back to the set list. Another Foley Ado one. Head, head first slide into Cooperstown. Does your husband know the way? I will never end up like him. Already. Head slide. It was a good follow up. It was a good Foley Ado song. Then we get into another new song, Fake Out. Uh, I think there was some there was some merch where it's like people were doing stuff with their flashlights that would make it like red. I don't know if that was just because people were doing that on their own or like Fall Out Boy handed out stuff for that. But you know, it looked pretty cool. Then then Pete talks a little bit, then he sends it to Patrick. He does a little stuff on his piano. First one he does is Young and Menace, which I was kind of shocked because usually they don't really talk about Mania anymore. But I will say though, this version where it's just Patrick on the piano, this version of Young and Menace, way better than the one on Mania because uh, they do it in soul. On the album version, it's just like chipmunk, chipmunk fucking craziness shit. But this one's just Patrick doing his piano going, going a little ham wild on the piano. And I was like, oh, I like it more stripped down. Then we get into What a Catch Donnie, which is a pretty solid ballad. Fucking chorus is nice. I've got a trouble that what a catch. He's all partially, it's like a little medley of his. So after he goes off a little bit on What a Catch, we then get <laughs> Don't Stop Me Now. You know, a cover of the Queen song. Didn't really expect that, but <laughs> it, was a, it was a neat surprise, I guess. They didn't, they didn't let Joe do the solo, though. I, I for sure think he would have killed that solo. But hey, you know, it is what it is. You can only hope for so much. Joe definitely could have killed that solo, man. In the world, I don't know. Then we get So Much for Stardust, the title track. Pete mentioned beforehand, he mentioned the music video with Jimmy Butler slightly. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I cannot be the only one here that knows who Jimmy Butler is. I wouldn't be surprised if people weren't too fond of it because we are in Portland. I don't know how much crossover there is between Fall Out Boy fans and NBA fans, but I mean, ever since Jimmy Butler came to media day with that fucking emo haircut, 
I wouldn't be surprised if some crossover started to leak into each other. So, um, yeah, this was a, it's a pretty gnarly crossover of fandoms, I will say that. But yeah, so much for Stardust. I like the title track. Are we headed out? Are we headed out? Are we headed out? You know. Then we get Baby Annihilation, which I think is another, like, little interlude. It's like a Pete Wentz, like, little, little poem for himself, a little monologue. <laughs> then we get into another cover. Crazy Train, Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Honestly, didn't surprise me that much because I, 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 I got spoiled like trying to prepare for like looking at past that list. So, um, you know, that was nice to see. I like Ozzy. I like Crazy Train. Um, they also didn't let Joe do the solo for that one either, which I'm pretty sure he would have killed. But over two with covering songs that have pretty good solos and not getting to the solo part. That was an L. That was an L fallout boy. I'm sorry, but let Joe shine some more, man. Then, 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 we get into a, we get into another fallout boy classic, Dance Dance. I don't know how he got there, but you know, it's probably just another case of um, show magic and keeping us, keeping us focused on something else. But Pete somehow made it to like the um, production, production area. He was on this pedestal lift doing his little bass intro, like, behind the, behind the floor, guys. And I was like, whoa! How the hell did he get there? That was pretty cool. And, you know, we went on with the song, and it was fucking great. Eventually, he came back to the stage. I'm assuming he was gonna do stuff with the crowd, but he kind of just went through. I don't know if people were allowed to get off their seats, but, you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I wasn't in the seat. I wasn't on the floor seats, so. Then we go into Hold Me Like a Grudge. Not too crazy on it, but, you know, the, cor the chorus is a little... The chorus is a little catchy. Hold me, hold me like a grudge. Then we get something to do with the magic eight ball that they've been having a while. <laughs> Pete asks like, should, should we just end the show here? And everyone's like, fuck, fuck no. And then like Pete then asks like, should we just play, a, play another song or something like that? Or was it, it's like a special song maybe? That's what I'm assuming. Then they played, um, Gay is not a synonym for shitty. It's not literally called that, but it's like the acron it's like the acronym. It's like wow, wow. I know my Fall Out Boy lawyer, all right. It's like the Magic Eight Ball special song. It's kind of like what Travis did for his shows, where he like played one special song, which was cool. That was another Infinity on High banger, so I can appreciate them for that. Train baby blues, why I bounce this way, this way. So after they play that song, I think this is where the encore section starts. I say encore because Pete was like, all right, this is where, this is usually where we can do the encore, but it's, I forgot what he said. God damn it, I didn't record it because I was too busy in the moment. Don't want to record everything. But Pete was like, this is usually the part where we do our encore, but we're just going to stay on stage and just riff out some songs, which I thought was pretty cool, you know, you know. I thought they were just going to like breeze through them like medley style, but no, they just did like full songs. So the first one they did, was light them up. My song is not what you did in the dark. It's become a follow up classic. It's been, it's been like a, <coughs> it's been like a staple song for like a decade now. And they also did like their little fire pyrotechnics. I'm pretty sure Pete also did his bass flamethrower thing too. That was pretty sick. And you know, light them, <laughs> explosions and shit. Look pretty badass. Then, then we get to thanks for the memories, which. I, I I will say, I have a pretty deeper connection to that song. Simply because my first year in marching band, that was the first song we played. Yeah, so our marching band show, that was our like opener. So, you know, my friend who was also in my high school marching band, we were like, we were like geeking out a bit because, you know, it's like, oh shit, what a, what a full circle moment. Which, you know, it was a nice moment to share. <laughs> not, not everyone in the high school band can attest to that. They, they probably hate that song, but Hey, you know, they lost, I guess. I had a fun time with that. To all my high school marching band friends. Shout out to Fall Out Boy. Then we go in the centuries. Another little anthem of theirs. Then we end off with Saturday, which is one from their first album too. We started with a newer song of the newest album. Then we end with a song from their oldest album. Ain't that pretty neat? And Saturday is a banger. <laughs> That was it. They went off stage, I'm pretty sure. They told us to drive home safely, get home safely. And that was it. No, like, come back on stage, play some more shit. Because technically that was the encore already. And yeah, 
that's it. We went home, ate some ate some food or something. Actually, no, I ate, what did I eat? I, before the show started, I grabbed like this fucking peanut butter bacon burger from this place called Killer Burger. I know, I'm kind of sinning. I, I got I got arena food when I could have just like waited until after the event. But look, man, when you're hungry, you're hungry, okay? And I was on a time crunch after the concert anyways. Show ended off a Saturday and then we went home and I was like, wow, that was a pretty fun night. <laughs> so yeah, that was the show. That was the, that was the so much for tour dust starting off point back in the US. A really fun night and a nice blast from the past. Well, I'm probably not gonna return to listening to Fall Out Boy regularly. It was nice to experience it for old time's sake. You know, kind of kind of like a, like a ECW alumni going to one night stand type thing. It's a nice homage, love letter to your past, corny, cringy self. No disrespect to the boys, of course. The fuck? Is that a McDonald's anime ad? Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm just noticing that right now. The fuck? Oh yeah, I've had I've had the Milwaukee Bucks Bulls game on as as I've been recording this. I mean the sound's off, so I I wasn't paying attention too much to it. But I just noticed there was a fucking anime McDonald's ad. What? Wow. Anyway, yeah, going going there, you know, just for like old time's sake. I know 2018 me would have loved this night. And not gonna lie, that part of me was on full display that night, so I can't even complain that much. So shout out to Patrick and the gang. Shout out to Fallout Boy. It was nice. Nice little, nice little interaction with us. I don't even know if I want to call it a send off. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Maybe Fallout Boy might still be touring ten years from now, and I just go back, go to that one. Cause fuck it, why not? I don't know what other concerts I'm going to. If Cordy actually schedules a date, then I guess it'll be that. Unless something huge happens here, then I'll probably be there. A bro can't be spending all his funds, or else I'm gonna have to start gambling. Gambling. Ugh. But yeah, if you're going on the tour dust, let me know how it went. Hopefully you have fun and. We're safe and all that shit. I think Seattle's happening tonight. Either tonight or sometime this weekend. Whenever I'm recording this, I don't know. Gotta love the Pacific North. Lo Gotta love the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, hopefully you have fun. Hopefully you stay safe and all that shit. Um, yeah. That's that's pretty much all I gotta say. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share a Fallout Boy memory. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. See you next time. I guess. Drive safely. Bye, Fall Out Boy. And now I do a guitar outro, which I haven't done in fucking months, man. I do not like plane rides. I will say, though, the plane ride home, like, the last half hour or so, I don't know, the turbulence was fucking atrocious. I don't know what to do. something up in Portland, I don't remember. Do this. Oh. Oh, hold up. Don't you know this how I get quiet, dude? If I learn that, if I learn that song, all the women will be like, "Wow, this guy knows his shit." When in reality, I I don't really know my shit. Don't you know I get quiet, the bucks are beating the bulls. What's new? What's new? Alright, yeah. Shout out to Dr. Squatch. Yeah, shout out to Dr. Squatch. Sponsor me. Your soap smell nice. <laughs>